Hi, and welcome to question uh, 8 of the 2017 paper 2 for the junior share higher level. And I would suggest you pause this uh, video just to have a go at the question, and the same thing for the, the other questions in the rest of the video. And come back to you when you've given it a go. Then you'll be able to find out where you went right or wrong, and that's the best chance you have of making connections for the future. If you need to set notes with the screen grabs of the exam questions and the answers built in, please email me at shanetroy at gmail.com. You'll see that email in the description for the video below. So question A part A here. Okay, I think uh, A part 1 is 10C part. A lot going on, a lot of reading. Okay, so let's read through to make sure that everything that's in the description is actually on the diagram. Sometimes they're not, so we need to be careful. The diagram below shows two right angle triangles. So you have a right angle triangle there, A, D, C. So I see that one. And I see the other one, A, B, C here. Okay. And the joint here are making this weird shape, which makes it very off-putting. Okay, but there is two separate triangles there. Um, they have right angles of B and D, so that's B there and D, so they're marked. Um, the length of A, B, and these two lines mean the length of. That happens again and again, people, they don't care what those means. They have different meanings in different contexts of maths. In different contexts, they mean absolute value. They turn whatever is inside positive. In this case, they just mean the length of A, B is 10. They're 10 units. They don't give you any... Um, um, centimeters, meters, whatever. So just make sure if you're putting in at the end of a question, put in units uh, if appropriate. So the length of AB is 10, that's marked. The length of AC is 12, that's marked there. Uh, the length of AD and DC are equal. So AD is there and DC is there. So we're going to call them, they're calling, well, they're calling my X files just to show them they're the same number. We don't, we don't know what that number is, but we know they are the same. Then the angle BAC, okay, the what's important there is the middle letter. Okay, the angle BAC is the same as the angle CAB, okay, it's because the A in the middle of it matters. They're calling it uh, capital Y or big Y. So that's everything. So part one that says use trigonometry to find the size of the angle Y, give your answer correct to one decimal place. Now, if you look at the two different triangles, okay, the more angles, so straight away you're thinking, is it Pythagoras theorem or the sine cos tan ratios? Okay, the sine rule and cosine rule could work, but they, they, they normally, if it's a regular triangle, the sine cos tan ratios will, will work better, quicker, easier. So if that's the angle I'm looking at, now I'm focused on this triangle, the triangle, uh, they're calling it ABC. Okay. So ignore the other one. If you need to redraw it, fine. Okay. So if I redrew it there, and I can just orientate it whatever way I want, and that's supposed to be a triangle, that's big Y. Okay. That's 10. And that's 12 there on the what would be the hypotenuse. That's the angle. So I'm looking to find y. Okay, so Pythagoras won't work. It doesn't do with angles. I could use it to find the length of uh, BC. Okay, but that's not going to help me. That's not the answer. Uh, I'd be better off using the sine ratios. Okay, so the sine ratios are sine equals the opposite of hypotenuse. Should have put them in here. Uh, cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse and tan equals opposite over adjacent. So if I label my triangle, okay, if that's the angle y I'm looking at, then this becomes the opposite, okay, and the 10 here becomes the adjacent. Let's see my bad writing, this looks terrible. And I'm going to put h for hypotenuse. So which are my three ratios? Now, some of you can write them out very quickly, okay. Um, I often remember this is a should old Harry, that's why I was taught. Catch, see for catch, a uh, herring. Um, was taught trawling off America. It was my version. Some people go so ka toa. Others memorize this by oh hell, another hour of algebra. Um, they're in the maths tables, so you know, if you're not sure of them, look them up. So if I go, well, if I write out sine, okay. So sine of some angle equals the fraction. Now basically, I often call this ratio of one, equals the fraction made by the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Now, it's the opposite, um, we don't, we don't have the angle, don't have the opposite, we do have the hypotenuse. But that's only one of three things I have. It won't work. Okay, you need to have two of the three things for this, for the formula to work. So sine is gone. Okay, I think it's cause, I'm going to go straight to cause here, okay. So cause of the angle is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent, you see there, given on the question, was 10. Can remember that, my angle y. That's my opposite, that's my adjacent, and the 12 there is my hypotenuse. So 
10 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 12. So for the cos ratios, remember these are just uh, for every fraction, from 0 to whatever, 1, um, there is an angle corresponding to it, even down to the minutes and seconds of an angle. There's a number corresponding to that. If you know the number, you can look up the angle that corresponds. There's three tables, the sine tables, the cos tables, the tan tables. Now, they used to be in the maths tables, and they're not anymore, and you just use the calculator for them. Okay, so if you know the angle, okay, and you don't know the number, you can find one part of the number, either the top or the bottom. Okay, if you have the number, you can use the calculator to look up the um, the inverse cos of the number and find out the angle is. Okay, so as I've done down here, okay, what the cos across it becomes the inverse cos of the fraction 10 to us. Okay. That comes up in the calculator as the angle 33.557, which I'm rounding to one decimal place, so it's the 5 here that matters. Okay, That 5 is greater than makes the next number go up by 1. So I end up at 33.6. And I put it in my degree symbol for the units. Okay, so that's part A, part 1. Now part 2 here, find the value of x, give your answer correct to two decimal places. Now I meant to say it earlier, but you basically have a triangle here with two sides of equal length. Okay, now that's an isosceles. Okay, equilateral has all three angles equal. So if these two angles are equal, that tells you something about the triangle. And that is that both those angles are equal. Because the fundamental thing about triangles is that as the angle increases, so does the side. There's a direct relationship. And it's often not pointed out enough, but that's the fundamental uh, thing behind a lot of trigonometry and algebra or geometry. So, if you know these two angles, okay, uh, you can use them to find out the bigger angle up here. Or if you know the bigger angle up here, you can use that, take away from 180, those two angles are equal to the difference of 180 and this angle. And that probably doesn't make sense when I'm saying it, okay, but let's go through the answer here. So, triangle ACD there is right-angled, and it's isosceles. Okay, so as we said, that angle there and that angle there are equal. Okay, now we know that this is 90, so these are going to be 45 and 45. But we're not asked that, okay? We're asked to find the length of the sides. Okay, so we can use Pythagoras to find the length of the sides. Okay, so the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the two the other two sides, A and B. Now we know that a and b are both x, okay, so 12 squared, which is hypotenuse squared, equals x squared plus x squared. Now one apple plus one apple is two apples, so 144, which is 12 squared, is equal to one plus one is two, so two x squared. You bring, you want to solve this, okay, you bring the two across, it was multiplying on the right, becomes divided on the left, now it doesn't change sign, okay, it's still positive, but it just changes operator, so big mistake here, people bring across and then with a minus. And that would send everything wrong. And when you do that sum, okay, 2, into 44, 2 divided into 144 is 72 by my math. Okay, and that equals to some number squared. So what number? The number by itself gives 72. Okay, now it's not a clean number. Uh, it's in a whole number. Um, so we're going to bring the square root across, the opposite of square, sorry, the square across, and it becomes the opposite, which is the square root. Put that to the calculator. I come up with 8.485. Um, and I think a few other digits in my calculator, and I was asked, we were asked to round it to two decimal places. So, as long as I have three decimal places, I can use this third digit uh, of the decimal places to tell me what to do with the second digit if I'm rounding, and that's five means I, leave, I bring the next number up by one. So, you have to put 8.49. Now, I didn't put in any word there, but I should have in the word units. Okay, it's entirely possible I would have lost a mark on that. Um, by not doing that. So let's try to avoid losing those marks if possible. That's part two. Now part three here is very tricky. It looks very tricky. It's not here I'm like very familiar with. It's not one of the more common ones. But I've put this image in here to get across this idea. Okay, if you have the center of a circle there, the angle formed here, okay, is always twice this angle formed here. And that's actually what's happening here. You can't really see it, okay, because it's a bit different. But that angle there is twice, we'll call that 2a, is twice this angle here. 
just to visualize that as if those two things were up, were up here, okay, making that big or angle. It's the same basic principle, okay. Now we get rid of those um, scribblings, okay. So let's get stuck in, okay. Now um, I'll put the answer in here. So P or the angle P or Q, now the R's of matters, okay. So P R Q. That angle there is also 22. Now, why? Because RQ is a radius and PQ is a radius. So they're equal length, which makes that an isosceles. If they're equal length, well, then those two angles are equal sides. So if this is 22, this has to be 22. Now, I'm going to get 44. If you take that from 180, you'll get this angle here. Okay, I've done that here. So 180, take away 22, take away the other 22. I'm left with 136, so that's 136 there. Now the reason I need that is it helps me to find this bigger angle here. So 360 take away 136. That big angle there is 224. Okay. Now that 224 is twice the angle T. Okay, so I've written there is 2A um, equals A. So that's there. The, the, there. A is going to be the same. Okay, so um, if that's 224, uh, that represents twice the angle we're looking for. Okay, so basically I'm having both sides, and 112 is the, now degrees, should put that in just in case, okay, uh, equals the angle that I'm being asked for. It's tricky. If you know that theorem, okay, no bother. If you know your SSC triangles, no bother, okay. But that could put a lot of people off. Even the shape of the diagram, you know, uh, circles and stuff, uh, and then triangles together, often just scares the Jesus out of people, okay, myself included. And that's part B then. I'm going up to almost 12 minutes, so that's question 8. And see you in question 9.